Well, Lawrence, thanks for joining us. Um, we're going to have a bit of a chat today about a few different subjects and with Black History Month, it's quite a good time to kind of get together and have this chat. Um, just to start us off, obviously what happened with Port Vale and, and the kind of racial abuse, do you just want to kind of start in your own words about how kind of it all unfolded and, and, and the feelings you had kind of around that? Yeah, um, so, you know, after the game, got on the coach and, you know, saw some messages and, you know, I just thought it would be in everybody's best interest, you know, to put them out there. You know, there's been some ch- some times in my career where uh, I've I've received messages and, you know, either replied or they've been deleted quickly. So then I couldn't put them out there. So I feel like this time I just had the opportunity and I thought it was the, the right thing to put it out there. And thankfully, I got a good reaction from not just Leighton Orient fans, but for fans of every club in the country. So, you know, I got a lot of support and... And, you know, uh, I just want to thank everyone that, that sent me a message and that put it out there that um, your support didn't go unnoticed and I appreciate every message I received. And Port Vale of, of today um, put out that they banned the supporter indefinitely and that um, there's ongo- it's an ongoing police matter. So, um, firstly, I guess it's good to see that the club have not just acted so quickly but so decisively as well. Yeah, you know, I have to as well um, thank personally the, the, ch- the chairwoman at um, Port Vale uh, who got in contact for a player I knew at, at Port Vale and, and she sent a lovely message, you know, saying that, that 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 will not be tolerated at their club and it kind of ruined the game, you know. I know we, we lost three two but, you know, it was it was a great game of football and, and you know, just through a couple of people it kind of soured the mood for everybody. So I just think for me personally I just wanna thank her um a lot and and hopefully, you know, next time we play them I can I can say hello and, and, and thank her in person, which I think will be a really nice thing to do so yeah I just want to put on record that my thanks for her and obviously uh, for everyone at Orient who who stood by me and, and supported me and in, in when I when I really needed it so uh, I feel it was a really nice gesture from everybody and and you know um, I can't control what happens you know to the person or to the people but you know um, I can only just put out on record thank you to everyone for the swift um, action and Hopefully these incidents don't happen again in the future. Mm. Can you tell us a bit about what it feels like to actually be racially abused? Because obviously a lot of people would have passed on messages of concern, but a lot of these people, like myself, would be white people that have never actually you know, experienced racial abuse. So could you try and maybe sum up those feelings that you get when, maybe not just this time, but in your life when you've kind of felt that racial abuse? Yeah, you know, um, it's, it's sad because I feel like uh, I don't. F- I feel like you shouldn't be judged by your skin colour. You know, I think you can be judged on many things. You know, if you make a mistake or if you don't do something as well as you should, I feel like yeah, you can be judged on that. That's not a problem. That's part and parcel of football. But to be judged on your skin colour or or to be judged on the way you look or, uh, or loads of things, I just feel like it's it's wrong and and you know yeah, it's sad. I found it really sad after the game. You know, I was I was quite shocked by the messages I received. Fair enough. You know, I I gave a bit of we had a bit of back and forth me and the fans and. You know, uh, I took it in good taste after the game. You know, um, I went inside and you know I took I took the defeat like a man. But you know, to receive those messages kind of makes puts in perspective that you know pe- there are people like that out there, and and you know it's it's not something that you wanna you know you wanna receive. And you know, I was I was quite sad and shocked by it. In terms of maybe not just that event, but can you remember the first time you kind of received racial abuse? Yeah, yeah, I remember. I was probably like nineteen, twenty years old. Um, playing against, uh, it was a cup game, and uh, I just received a, a message after the game um, from the opposition fan, and uh, he kind of, I replied straight away, it was the first time ever, and I, I replied straight away, and then, you know, um, it was kind of the wrong thing to do, I should have just screenshot it and put it out there, but you know, you just have so much adrenaline, and you know, I think, I, as a 27 year old now looking back, I feel like I dealt with that wrong, and I feel like, now I feel like it was better for me to put that out there and, and you know, to, to be fair to everybody, you know, they supported me, all the changing room, the staff, um, you know, they, they, they were right behind me and I appreciate them for that. And it made, you know, me posting it, I wasn't as afraid to do it or it just made it easy for me to put it out there and, and see, you know, what, what some people are like. So it was good. It was good to have that back in and support. And I, and again, I really appreciate it. There's a second case that come out as well. Um, it turned out to be a juvenile which kind of shows some of the problems with society that they're expressing these views at, at such a young age. So how much do you think um, needs to be done in terms of education long term to kind of eradicate these views? Yeah, you know, I feel like education is 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 a massive part of it, you know, because I feel like if you're learning to be racist or prejudiced or anything, you know, homophobic at such a young age, you know, I kind of feel like, you know, uh, 
is that you can get punished in many ways and then serve your punishment and then you can still feel the same. But I feel like if you get educated, you know, you can you can understand, you know, that that, you know, it's it's hard to be not hard, but it's it's difficult to be a a black person or an Asian person or in society, you know. Um and you know, just by education and just understanding where we're coming from, you know, as as hu we're just human beings, you know, at the end of the day, and understanding where we're coming from, I feel like it will be it'll be much better for for especially the younger generation to to learn that, you know, and see that is a is very difficult for for um black people and Asian people and anyone less foreign or to to get to get a job or to you know to succeed in football or whatever. So I just feel like the education is a very important point, you know, that you know that they people can learn you know that people can learn what we go through and and can see and and under, try to understand you know and i feel like that's very important mm. obviously it's a very emotionally charged weekend and, and leading up to that that game at barrow where the um the players didn't take the knee um for the first time do you want to tell us a bit about that, that decision kind of what's been said in in the um in the dressing room and also your personal feelings on it yeah you know um we spoke in the in the changing room you know before the game and you know we just decided you know, on that occasion that we wasn't going to take the knee. We, um, we just felt as if the, it wasn't sending a, a big enough message, you know, that, you know, we've played a lot of games where the knee's been booed and, and you know, um, we, we just felt like enough was enough, you know. Uh, uh, to be fair, you know, we've spoken again. We're going to have another a chat on before the game on the weekend about what we do going forwards. I feel like we have to think deeply about it. You know, we don't want to make it seem like it's a, just a gesture where we just stand up and we don't care. You know, we want to show um, our fans and everybody that, that watches Orient that, you know, we, we care deeply about the community and we care deeply about, um, you know, everything that that's good about this club. And, and, you know, um, we feel like we can have these discussions as a team. We have a very good, um, older experienced pros that we can speak to about everything that support us in everything. And, and, you know, uh, we'll have another chat about it most definitely. And, and we'll see what we do going forwards. But I just felt, felt, we all felt that on Saturday, we just wanted to take a stand and, and stand up and, and, and just see, you know, there's a lot of cases going on in the country at the minute, you know, and, and we, we wanted to just be, we don't want the, the, we don't want the need to lose it's to lose what it stands for, you know, and we feel like, you know, as a discussion, we can be open and honest with each other, and we can come to a a, a decision a decision that, you know, we can we can do moving forward. So um, we'll do that um, before the game on Saturday, and I feel like whatever decision that we make as a group, it'll just know that it's made. You know, collectively, we all are on the same page. Not half of us want to kneel, and half of us want to stand. We we'll all do it together, and that I think is the most important thing that we do things as a squad, and we do things together because. You know that's the only way. That's the only way things can change moving forwards. You know, everyone sticking together, not just us, but in the wider community too. So, I feel like we'll we'll make a measured decision, and then we'll we'll um we'll we'll do that on Saturday moving forwards. Mm. This month represents Black History Month, so um obviously throughout the world, I think it started in America, but um kind of spread over to the UK now, where we kind of look back at Black History and celebrate kind of Black achievement. What do you think something like this can can do? Yeah, it's, it's very important, you know. Uh, every time I drive into the stadium, I see the statue of Laurie Cunningham, you know, who was a who was a one of the first black players to play for England, or the first. So, um, you know, it's it's amazing that Orient have his statue outside um, the stadium, and I feel like, you know, this club is is very diverse. You know, the area that it's in, um, the people that come to games, you know, um, the players that we have in the changing room. You know, we're a very diverse squad, you know, it's in the middle of London, which is in a community which is, again, very diverse. And, you know, to show appreciation to everyone before us and, you know, uh, for the Black for Black History Month, I feel like it's very important. You know, um, uh, it's, it's a club that, you know, we all enjoy playing for and, you know, has a lot of has a lot of people in the community that that help a lot of a lot of other people, you know, in in and around Leighton. And I feel like. Just by little gestures, you know, by appreciating and and accepting Black History Month, I feel like it's very important um, moving forwards, and I hope that's something that can continue. You know, uh, we 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 are, you know, our captain Omar as well. You know, they, these are big players. They're they're black players, and you know, we've got to appreciate them and and respect what they're doing for the club, and especially what they do for the club outside of on the pitch. You know, in the community, and I feel like. That's very important. Mm. And it's also really important to 
kind of move on conceptions over the years and, and to kind of enhance people's understanding. One of those misconceptions can be about black goalkeepers. So just wondering if you could tell us about kind of your experience of growing up and, um, and that kind of topic. Yeah, you know, it's, it was tough, you know. Um, it's not common that you see a black goalkeeper. So I think a lot of the, the perception was, you know, he's got a mistake in him or... And, you know, I've had to battle through that my whole career and, and not just me, you know, there's there's loads of other black goalkeepers have had to deal with it. And, um, you know, it's, it's something that I think is changing. You know, I, I look at Mendy at Chelsea, you know, um, I had never heard of him when he signed for Chelsea, for Chelsea and, um, you know, he's done amazing, you know, uh, and he really has kind of paved the way, you know, for, for a lot of black goalkeepers, you know, we can look up to him as a reference, you know, for, for what he's done and in the in the recent past you know especially and um you know i feel like that that perception's starting to change a little bit you know i'm looking at, at our league most definitely that i think there's seven or eight i can count on the top of my head that are starting week in week out so i feel like that perception's changing but it, it's a long way to go i don't want goalkeepers to be picked just because they're black or because they're white that's something that that i don't want i just want people to be picked fairly on on merit and whether he's black white or yellow or green it doesn't matter you know um i feel like it's important that that kind of bias of oh he, you know he's he's black he'll make a mistake i feel like that that's starting to leave the game a little bit and 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 moving forwards that's that's all we can ask for you know just to be judged on our abilities and hopefully that can continue in the future just finally we've also got black goalkeepers in in our academy and our women's team as well what kind of advice would you give based on your experiences in your career to, to these people who are kind of starting in their careers? Yeah, no, the advice would just be to, to enjoy the game, you know. Um, I love football. I love playing football. I love coming in to train every day. I love working with the players and, you know, I, I just enjoy it, you know. Um, uh, I love helping the young lads. Yeah, you're right. We have a, a young goalkeeper, Sean, who's, who's, a, who's a black goalkeeper as well. And, you know, I can, I can be honest with him and tell him, you know, it's not all rosy every day, you know. Um, there will be times when you might maybe get judged, you know, because of you're a, you're a black keeper, you know, but you've just got to work harder than everyone else. You've got to work as hard as you can every day and, and just enjoy playing football. And I feel like once you lose the enjoyment, you know, I feel, feel like it's time to, to stop. But I feel like, you know, I, I love it. And, and um, it's just something that, you know, I've always wanted to do and I'm just going to enjoy and appreciate every day that I'm I'm allowed to do it. So that's the best advice I'd give.